turn him around. Your punctuality itself. Has everything proceeded according to schedule? Indeed it has. Number 10, Miranda Moriarty, with brackish cigar case at midnight exactly. Perfect. With one exception. A trifling one, perhaps. But I simply do not happen to be Colonel Moran. Sherlock Holmes. At your service. I can well imagine the profundity of your disappointment, Professor Moriarty. And you cannot fail to realize that there can only be one explanation for my having successfully penetrated the most carefully concealed lodgings in the whole of London. I observe your choice of decorations is fully as disagreeable as your choice of profession. Where's Colonel Moran? In custody. As are Quint, Adelspeed, Stryker, and Nickers. In short, Professor, your entire organization here in Britain is now occupying cells in Bow Street Police Station, and the assassination of Lord Brackish has failed. Damn and blast you for the matter that you are, sir with your West End ways, talking down your upper-class nose and only happy when you're dressing up as someone else as though life was some schoolboy lark. Blast you, Holmes! Blast you! I suggest you attempt to get hold of yourself. Your rage is beginning to affect your speech. Did you come alone tonight? Since you asked? Yes. I thought as much. I know your methods by now. Your inability to resist the tour de force, the coup de grace, the necessity of nourishing your ego unassisted. Atrocious. Along with your French. Yes, and my only regret is I must leave alone. Your cohorts refuse to implicate when Colonel Moran fears for his life to do so. But be warned, Professor. Your people have been captured and you are alone. Alone and helpless. And I will have you yet. Mr. Holmes, your interference in my affairs has gradually grown from mild annoyance to insufferable impertinence. Tonight's actions have finally rendered you intolerable to me. Really? Only tonight? You've been intolerable to me much longer than that. Would you be good enough to observe this? <laughs> And this. This. Not to mention this. Mr. Holmes, there are more than a dozen ways to kill a man in this room. And that trap door into the Thames will remove all traces of the man's ever having been here. Do you wonder why I haven't employed any of these devices against you? Well, it's not for want of trying because they don't suit me. I will destroy you, but in my fashion. Will you? Yes. I'm going to crush you so that your humiliation and downfall will be witnessed by the entire world. How fascinating. And just how do you propose to do that? The crime of the century, the past century, and all the centuries to come is in preparation. It will go forward as planned despite the temporary setback your interference has caused me. It will go forward. It will take place. And, Mr. Holmes, it will take place before your very eyes, and you will be powerless to prevent it. The world will gape at its immensity. And when the world discovers it occurred within arm's length of the incomparable Sherlock Holmes, the world will sneer, the world will ridicule, the world will hound you into oblivion. And that is why I haven't employed any of the means at my disposal in this room. I have other plans for you, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Have you? I, on the other hand, have the same plan I've always had for you. To see you swing at the end of a hangman's rope. And I have no doubt that mine will be the plan that prevails. It's a pity about the chandelier. It was the only item in the room that showed the merest modicum of style. Don't disturb yourself. I'll show myself out.
Watson. Breakfasting. Oh, how'd you work that out, Holmes, eh? Oh. You mind awfully, Watson. You know I have little head for humor when there's nothing to occupy me but staring out of rain street windows at the other side of the street. It has been three days since I broke the back of Moriarty's organization. And there has not been a single letter or caller worthy of my attention. As my official biographer, Watson, you've precious little with which to occupy yourself these days. You'll soon be afflicted with the same boredom that I am suffering. Oh, well, I'm certain things will change before long, eh, Holmes? By the by, within a fortnight's time, you'll be getting a letter from America. How on earth do you know that? Oh, stealing a bit of your thunder, eh, Holmes? Mystified you, eh? Thoroughly. Now, listen to this. In the theatrical section. Our Broadway correspondent reports that on the 31st of this month, Daniel Furman's production of Sir Arthur Pinera as the second Mrs. Tanqueray will open at the Empire Theatre in New York. In addition to Mr. Kendall, Mr. Huntley, Mr. East and Miss Campbell, the distinguished cast will include in her first non-singing role, Irene Adler. Dash it all, Holmes. I was dead set on astonishing you. You have, Watson. Your ability to extract the single item of unalloyed interest from the massive wordage of the times is an extraordinary facility. Oh. Well, she's never failed to send you first night tickets, eh, Holmes? Never. Always row B, seats five and seven. The last nine seasons. One of these days, we must find ourselves in those seats, eh, Watson? Oh, well, they've gone begging far too long. Come in. The post has just come. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. Uh, could I make you some hot tea? Yes, and uh, a slice or two of that gammon, yes, if there's any sir. left. Watson. You must apologize to the transatlantic mails. Your estimate of a fortnight lacks 13 days of proving itself accurate. A rugby as usual, eh, Holmes? Seats five. Holmes, what is it? Well, that's a rum eh, Holmes? Whatever did she tear him up for like that? Watson, there's not a moment to lose. We must set out for New York this very day, engage passage immediately. Yes, yes, at once. Waterloo Station, driver. We've 40 minutes to catch the boat train. I am trying to connect two events that by all sense of logic cannot be connected. Truly a futile exercise. Well, what are they? Oh, my conversation with Moriarty three nights ago and the receipt of those shredded theatre tickets this morning. Well, how could the one have the remotest connection with the other? And yet, if I were Moriarty and my one unwavering determination of the destruction of Sherlock Holmes, I would expend every effort at my command to seek out the single, the, the only chink in his armor, however small it may be. And once I had found it, if it exists at all, it is there I should thrust with all the strength and fury I could muster. Chink in your armor? Rubbish! There's no such thing as a chink in your armor. Listen to you, Watson. They don't have handsome cabs in New York, just cabs. Cab! Over here, my man. See, Watson? Get our cases of all as quickly as you can, will you? The Empire Theatre, and don't spare your steam. Jump oh, in, right, Watson. Thank
just on half past three. Eight, Holmes. What are you talking about? Half past eight, see? Watson, we are on New York time. Oh. Oh, well, I've always found Greenwich time perfectly adequate to my needs. I see no reason for changing it now. Hello, what's this? Oh. How do I get through here? You're gone. Go around the south end of Lafayette Square. That'll take a half an hour. Driver, what is this? It's the new subway, sir. Subway? It's a subway. It's their word for underground. Now that he mentions it, I recall reading of its construction. New York's first, I understand. Do you mean to tell me they don't have an underground railway here? That stands to reason, doesn't it? They don't have hansoms. Driver, where are we now? 8th Avenue, sir. Almost to 34th Street. Good. Come along, Watson. The Empire Theatre's on 39th and Broadway. The walk will do us good. Driver, would you be kind enough to get our cases to the Algonquin Hotel the best way you're able? I'm sure that this will take care of any inconvenience. Thank you. Come along, Watson. We walk this distance tenfold on a single afternoon in London. Heads up, mister. I say, look here. The... I think we bought a war to keep these barbarians in the Commonwealth. Watson, see if you can purchase two tickets for this evening's performance. I will endeavor to find out what I can inside. Yes, I, of course, I'll, I'll, I'll join you when I've done it. Oh, excuse me, is this a queue? <laughs> Yes, sir. How do you do? Is Miss Irene Adler in the theater, do you know? Nobody here but me, sir. I must speak with her at once. Do you know where I might find her? No one is to be disturbed until curtain time. Mr. Furman's orders. This is extremely urgent. So are Mr. Furman's orders. Do you know her address? Look, I just finished telling yes, you that... Yes, quite. Look here, my good man. When did you last see Miss Adler? This morning at line rehearsal. Was she all right? Letter perfect. Was she? tell you how relieved I am to learn that. Wonder if I might prevail upon you for a further service. Would you be so kind as to give Miss Adler my card directly she gets to the theater, tell her I'm at the Algonquin Hotel and must speak with her as soon as possible? I think I can arrange that for you, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. You will earn my undying gratitude. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. As I hoped, Watson, we have a splendid piece of reassurance. As late as this morning, Irene was apparently in good health. Good. And what have you been able to accomplish? That's a rum go, Holmes. Deucely rum go. See those? Last two in the house, the fellow in the window says. Row B. Seats five and seven. No, don't bother, Holmes. I already questioned the fellow. You have? Well, those tickets were purchased a fortnight ago by Irene Adler. To send to me. Exactly. Then why are they here? They were returned. When? Earlier this afternoon. By whom? Well, there's a stranger, a chap in the box office, never seen him before, he says. Holmes, what do you make of it all? Oh, it's all my apprehensions were returned. Those tickets sent to me in Baker Street were forgeries. These were intercepted before they could reach me. Whatever for? The phrase continues to ring in my ears. The crime of the century past century and for all centuries to come is now in preparation. Moriarty said that to me. You mean he's behind, behind whatever it is that's going on? It will take place before your very eyes, and you will be powerless to prevent it. Watson, there is devilry afoot. I feel it in my very marrow. But what are we to do about it? Until it chooses to reveal its nature to us, there is nothing we can do except dress, dine and attend this theater tonight. Upstairs. Come in. Have 
You got something for me, Zimmer? He's here. And it is. All right, back to your post. You know what to do. Yes, sir. Act one. The cast is assembled. The play begins. It's not a red Indian in the entire place. I had noticed. We didn't have to rush dinner after all. It's late. I wonder what's wrong. Do you suppose anything's wrong? Oh, it's way past working time. It's the time they started. Oh, yeah. I'm never getting on with it and all that, eh? Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mr. Daniel Furman. I beg your indulgence, please. Due to the sudden indisposition of Miss Irene Adler. What's quick? Oh, the the role of Paula at this performance well, oh, just don't will be played by Miss May Robeson. Thank you. I demand to be shaken to Miss Adler at once. My name is Sherlock Holmes. Oh, Mr. Holmes, thank heaven you're here. Where is she? So far as I know, at home. I must know exactly what happened. All I can tell you, sir, is that when she didn't appear after half hour was called, I sent the call boy to her house, and he returned with this. As you can see, it just says she's sick and will be unable to perform. With a full house and the curtain already delayed 15 minutes, I had no alternative but to go out front and make the announcement you just heard. Mr. Holmes, can you shed any light on such behavior? This is absolutely unlike Miss Adler. Well, I can shed some light, Mr. Furman. This note was not written by someone suddenly taken ill. It was written by a person in the clutches of the most extreme terror. Well, look at the hasty scrawl. The hand shaking so it's scarcely able to hold the pen. In fact, here, here, and here. The pen has actually dropped from her hand. I must know Miss Adler's address at once. 14 Gramercy Park, but... There's no time for buts. Come, Watson. TV won't turn up now. Mm. Hardly. Then you too shall hear it. Doctor, Frank, this is the last time we are to meet in these rooms. The last time? Really? Good evening. I must speak to your mistress at once. I'm sorry, sir. Miss Adler is not at home. To Sherlock Holmes? Step aside. I must have that assurance from the lady's lips herself. Irene, are you there? I'm here, Sherlock. It's all right, Hannah. Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson may come up. Yes, madam. May I ring for some refreshments, some coffee, brandy? Would you care to sit down? Sherlock, you're, you're looking quite well. You've hardly changed in the years since we've met. And Dr. Watson, are you quite well also? Thank you, dear lady. Irene, we were at the theatre tonight. Did the performance go on? With your understudy. The audience was naturally disappointed at the substitution. Miss Robeson is a very promising fine young performer. What is the indisposition of which you're suffering? A trifling matter. I should Irene, quite... why did you not go to the theatre tonight? Did Mr. Furman not explain I that insist I... I be spared this masquerade. It demeans a friendship of almost ten years standing. Irene, it is time for the truth. What is it that holds you in this grip of almost unbearable terror? What is the message you are awaiting? And why are you prepared to remain up the entire night and not leave this house until you receive it? I should have remembered. One cannot pretend in front of Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Holmes, what do you mean by a message about staying up all night, about not leaving the house? The simplicity itself, Watson. Irene has cancelled the most important night of her career. 
and look at the fire. Made up to last until morning. And that curtain. See, it hangs on tightly. Again and again it has been thrust to one side so that the street below can... The window is unlatched. As I say, someone has repeatedly stepped out here looking in all directions. Waiting. Waiting for what? Watson, not a single piece of furniture in this room bears the imprint of a human form. Irene, you have spent the time since at least eight this evening pacing up and down, sitting only at that desk over there to write the note to Mr. Farman. What is this? Who is this child? His name is Scott. He's my son. Where is the boy now? He's upstairs in bed. May I see him? He's asleep. Oh, I shall be very quiet. I'm afraid I cannot oblige you. I am convinced you cannot. This photograph normally stands on the desk here. A faint line of dust marks where the base usually rests. You seized it up while you were pacing. You gazed at it with a... with a look of longing with a sob of anxiety, I dare say, and then you flung it onto the sofa because the boy is not upstairs in bed. The boy is not in this house at all. The boy has been kidnapped. Yes, 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 he has been kidnapped. And I'm out of my mind with grief. Holmes, good heavens, the lady's at the end of her tether. Watson, fetch us some brand. Erin, please, you must control yourself. We have no time. I must know exactly what happened. Yes. Yes, of course. I will have a drop of brandy. Thank you, Watson. Of course, dear lady. Yes, madam. Hello. Would you tell Fraulein Rockenbach to come down right away, please? Of course, madam. Ich bin zur Schule gegangen, um den Jungen abzuholen. English, Fräulein. Ja, natürlich, bitte. I had gone to meet the young boy at school, and we were walking home, which we used to do each day. It is this afternoon you are referring to, Fräulein. Ja. Well, please describe to us what ja. occurred. Um, uh, three blocks from here, maybe four. Ja, four. A carriage drew beside us and stopped. A man was on top driving the horse. Um, it was a closed carriage and all the shades were down. Suddenly, a man leaped from the inside. Yes, go on. He seized and kicked me. Good heavens, the brute. Watson, please. He seized and kicked you. Yeah, first by the hair like this and then with his foot like this in the chin. I expect she means the shin. Thank you, Watson. What happened then? He threw me into the gutter. God in himmel, was he strong, so strong. He laid his hands on the boy and dragged him into the carriage, and off they raced. Irene, when you learned of this, did you inform the police? I was on the point of doing so when... When what? When this telegram arrived. What telegram? I'm about to show you, Sherlock. Try not to be so impatient. I ask your pardon. When a problem absorbs me, I tend to neglect formalities. The problem absorbs me also. Do nothing, stop. Tell no one, stop. Further instructions will be forthcoming, stop. Disobey these orders, and you will face the direst consequences. Oh, dear lady! Oh, sit down. Holmes? I mean... Forgive me. I thought I was stronger. So there it is, Sherlock. I have been waiting. Waiting, waiting for those further instructions since four o'clock this afternoon. And it is now nearly 9.30. What has happened to my son? Oh, the message.
close carriage holds. One man at the reins, the other must be at the door. Hold on! Go! <laughs> Wait! You're standing there for my man. Why didn't you give the note to your mistress? Not addressed to Miss Adler, sir. Not addressed to her? To whom is it addressed? It's addressed to you, sir. Life of Scott Adler depends upon one thing alone, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Your refusal to cooperate with the police. You will refuse, and you will give no reason for your refusal. Or the boy will die. If she's still awake in an hour's time, she should take another of those powders. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night, gentlemen. That should take care of matters till morning. Cab. That walk. Not anything you say. Can you make head or tail of it at all, Holmes? I can't. I am being manipulated. Hey, what's that? Manipulated? How do you mean? That chink in my armor, it's been discovered. I'm sure I have the foggiest notion of what you're talking about. Watson, did you know my full name was William Sherlock Scott Holmes? Is it? No, I didn't know that. Same as the lad, eh? Well, it's not an uncommon name, is it, Scott? What about that exploring Johnny? One is down in Antarctica just now. Another Scott. One thing puzzles me, though. One thing? I commend your clarity of mind, Watson. What thing is that? Have it in the letter about you not cooperating with the police. No one's asked you to cooperate with the police. Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Yes, my name is Holmes. Inspector Lafferty, New York Police Department. And I'm Mortimer McGraw, president of the International Gold Exchange. How do you do, Mr. McGraw? This is Dr. Watson. How do you do? Mr. Holmes, I only learned an hour ago that you were even in New York. I would have come to you sooner. About what? The Mr. McGraw has been kind enough to offer his Landau for our convenience. Could I trouble you, both of you, to join us in a short drive? As you wish. Thank you. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, it is almost 11 at night. Well, more likely, yes. Mr. Holmes, have you ever heard of the International Gold Exchange? No. Gold is a very attractive metal to thieves, as you well know. It is also the major medium of exchange between nations of the civilized world. Quite. Shipments of large quantities of gold from one country to another is not only arduous but dangerous. Because of that, the International Gold Exchange was established. May I describe it to you? Please do. Deep beneath the basement of the Bowery National Bank here in Manhattan, cut into the bedrock of the island, are a number of vaults. Each vault considered the property of the sovereign nation whose name appears above its steel doors. I think I understand the object of your exchange, Mr. McGraw. When gold is to be transferred from one country, Russia, let us say, to another Great Britain, instead of making the long and hazardous journey from Moscow to London, the required amount of bullion is merely removed from one vault and placed into another near it. Exactly. Now six trusted employees of the exchange do the work that used to require 600 nationals of the countries involved. And the risk of theft has been reduced to virtually nothing. Most ingenious. I congratulate you, sir. I only have one question. Why are we being told all this at this hour of night? Because the gold's been stolen, that's why. All of it. Every brick, virtually. When was the theft discovered? When the door was unlocked at the bottom of the elevator shaft, the vaults were empty. And there was a huge hole cut into the rear wall of the chamber. A hole leading where? Into the subway excavation that passes right by the bank. We found one brick of the bullion in the tunnel, another in the excavation. And uh, 
news of this incredible theft has been kept from the public? So far. But Mr. Holmes, in three days' time, a transaction is to take place between Italy and Germany. When that happens, the theft will be discovered, and the international repercussions will be such that not even war, world war, can be ruled out. Mr. Holmes, we've only got three days to find the gold and get it back in the vault. And we need your help to do it. The life of Scott Adler depends upon one thing alone, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Your refusal to cooperate with the police. You will refuse, and you will give no reason for your refusal, or the boy will die. Gentlemen, I am sorry. I cannot assist you in this matter. You what? I can be of no service to you in any way whatsoever. We've been talking to Sherlock Holmes. You have. Now, gentlemen, you must permit me to bid you a good night. Come along, Watson. Wait a minute. You can't turn us down like this. We've come to you because of your worldwide reputation. Mr. McGraw has explained to you the seriousness of the situation. Inspector, I have nothing further to say on the matter. Well, I have something further to say to you. Inspector. When the crime's found out, and it's learned it could lead to a world war, and Sherlock Holmes knew about it and didn't lift one finger to assist the police, what's the world going to think of the great Sherlock Holmes then? Grab on. Good night, Inspector. Hey, uh, Mr. McGraw! The scoundrel, how dare he? Now, do you understand what I meant when I spoke of being manipulated? Now, do you fully appreciate the art, the genius of this Napoleon of crime? What Napoleon are you talking about? He knew those mutilated tickets would bring me to New York. He knew I would uh, be at the theater tonight, and the announcement of Irene's indisposition would make me rush to her home so that he could deliver that note to me. He knew that Inspector Lafferty would be waiting here for me at the hotel and that he would enlist my aid in recovering the gold. And because of Scott Adler, I would be forced to refuse him. Every single thing Moriarty promised me that night in London has come true. The crime of the century has been committed, and I am helpless to do anything about it. Moriarty made off with that gold? And with Scott Adler, too, I'm convinced. So what the deuce can he do with all that bullion? You heard what McGraw said. He can bring every nation to the brink of a world war. What good's a world war to him? The prevention of it. With mankind trembling upon the brink of unimaginable devastation. Professor Moriarty will come forward and reveal that the gold is in his possession. The bankrupt nations in his power. Moriarty, ruler of the world. The crime of all centuries to come. Indeed it is, Watson. Indeed it is. The life of Scott Adler depends upon one thing alone, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Your refusal to cooperate with the police. I am powerless to circumvent it. <clears throat> Holmes? Yes? Forgive me saying so, Holmes, but if you're prepared to stand there and fiddle while the world goes up in smoke, well, then your precious Professor Moriarty deserves to sit on his mountain of gold and, and tell the rest of us to, to jump. Well, 
I never made any bones about what that damn fiddle does to me nerves. It's quite all right, Watson. Please, don't apologize. What do you say? What is it, Holmes? A fan down there is watching this room. I saw him twice this evening marching up and down with his signboards. Is he, Joe? I wonder what he's up to. Let me tell you that, Watson. He is wondering what we are up to. My dear friend, I owe you a profound debt of gratitude. Oh, come now, Holmes. But I do, I do. If you had not reprimanded me just now as you did, I would have gone on doing exactly what you accused me of doing. Fiddling while the world burned and Moriarty would indeed have won the day. But you broke the spell, my friend. Watson. Why are we being watched? Ask yourself that question. There's no need to. You just did. And I'll answer it. If Moriarty's plan is so perfect, if I am supposed to be helpless, destroyed, unable to fight him, then why is it necessary to have me watched? That's not an answer, Holmes. It's another question. And the answer is because the plan is not perfect. It has one single flaw in it. And that man down there has to be there so that Moriarty will know at once if I discover that flaw. Well, have you? Yes. He is not going to know that. Watson, what is it that prevents my assisting the police? Well, the boy's safety, of course. Of course. So long as Scott Adler remains Moriarty's captive, then my hands are tied. His life hangs upon my inactivity. But what if the lad were to be snatched from Moriarty's claws and set free? By who? By us, and in such a way that Moriarty still believes him prisoner. If that can be achieved, then the manacles fall from my wrists and I'm free to turn my attention to the theft of the gold. Mm. Well, easier said than done, I'd say. Yes, Watson. I believe that is just what you have said. Oh, thank you. Oh, the chap's still down there. It's a damp night, too. Oh, he'll have a nice touch of the rheumatism in the morning. I hope he enjoys it. You're not going to start up on that wretched fiddle again, are you? Oh, we're in for one of those sessions, are we? Precisely. Don't let me detain you, Watson. I expect this will be a four-pipe problem at the very least. Yeah. Well, take care you don't set the upholstery afire the way you did that night at Aspital Azouche. <coughs> night, Holmes. Night, Watson. Sleep well. Seven in the morning, Watson. What's that? Oh, Watchmaster. Oh, the cheeky beggars, I must say, making up their own time. <whistles> Surprise, no one's called the fire brigade. Oh, that chap's been replaced. This one's wearing stripes instead of checks. Well, Holmes, what do you come up with? Two points of exceeding interest, Watson. About which I shall be delighted to tell you whilst we're dressing. Scott Adler's abductor was a woman. That's impossible. Well, the conclusion is inescapable, Watson. How did Fraulein Reichenbach's assailant begin the attack? Grab the other hair. The instinctive target of a woman when she finds herself in combat with another of her gender. What did she do then? Kicked her. In the shins, another instinctive form of female attack. Well, I must say, Holmes, None of the ladies with whom I've been associated have ever I mentioned ladies, Watson. I said a woman, and one of sufficient strength that she was able to fling the floor line to the ground, seize young Scott Adler. Well, Holmes, you're assuming too much. It's all very well to say that a woman struck Fraulein Reichenbach and pummeled her in the manner you described. 
But that's a far cry from her seizing a nine-year-old boy who's struggling, crying, aha! Admiral, my dear Watson. Come in. You have just hit upon the second one. No mention was made by the Fraulein of any struggle or outcry. Excuse me. Right, George, you're right. Uh, nothing, just leave things we will serve ourselves. Thank you very much. So, it must be assumed that none was made. I am convinced that the matter was arranged with the lad in advance. What? Scott Adler cooperate with Moriarty in his own kidnapping? Suppose it were put to the lad as a joke of sorts. A joke on who? Surely not his mother. Or perhaps on the Fraulein. But for what reason? And why a woman kidnap her in the first place? Because the land has to be kept somewhere quietly and inconspicuously, and what better place could there be than a respectable lodging house? And what better guardian than someone who might be taken for his cousin, his aunt, or even his mother? Watson, I have some questions I must put to Irene at once. That sedative you gave her, will it have worn off by now? At a quarter past one in the afternoon, of course. Watson. Oh! Oh, that's all, Holmes. If an Englishman doesn't maintain his ties with home, what becomes of England? Come along, Watson. Holmes! Mm -hmm. Oh, pippers will get cold. Oh, well. Oh. Irene, I must know everything you and Scott did yesterday. Everything. Well, for one thing, we went to the opera. The management sent around complimentary tickets, and Scott is fond of Aida, and he also has a tremendous crush on little Nicole Romaine. Uh, who so... is this little Nicole Romaine? Why, she's a member of the corps de ballet. Did you hear that, Watson? The dancer. Quick, strong, agile, eh? Is it customary for the Metropolitan Opera to send you tickets? No. No, it isn't really. Then they could have been sent by someone else. Why, I simply never thought about it. Now start thinking about it now, and seriously. Tell me about Scott and this little Nicole Romain. He's her pet. Whenever we go backstage after Which performance... Which you did on this occasion? Yes. They spoke together, these two? Oh, my, yes. Laughing and whispering in each other's ears. She's hardly more than a child herself. Whispering in each other's ears. Do you hear that, Watson? Hatching the plot right there, I've no doubt. The plot? What plot? A plot, my dear Irene, in which you and your unfortunate son are leading players. And a plot in which I must now assume a role myself. Uh-huh. Our friend in the checkered suit is back. Oh, chap doesn't even have a change of clothes. A bit penurious, this Moriarty fellow, huh? Watson, it is vital that I leave this house unobserved. I dare say there's a back way out. Mm. The same thought will have occurred to Moriarty. No, you and I must appear to leave this house, us drawing our friend out there away from here. Irene, I seem to remember on a not too distant occasion your remarkable impersonation of a young man. Do you think you could be equally deceptive in the guise of one not quite so young as that? I am not quite so young as that anymore either, Sherlock. Oh. Right along, Watson. Right along. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. The opera house is just across the street, if you I care. know I would much prefer it be delivered. Whatever you want. I'll send the boy right away. The Twickenham Tops. What a mysterious, fascinating, tiny world we live in. What's that, sir? Oh, nothing. I was just having a conversation with myself. How much do I owe you? Seventy-five cents. Thank you. Sorry, mister. The lady's not there. Oh, 
Very odd, and it was marked urgent. Yes, sir. That's why they've given me the address of the hotel, so I can deliver it. Splendid, my dear chap. I shall take care of it myself. Now, you look like a lad who knows his way around this town. Where can I find a first-rate theatrical costume here? Signore Croce, you bring in the bowl, huh? Va bene, and fai molta tensione. Buongiorno. How we present Il Grande Bandini, direct from the Victoria Palace. The Victoria Palace, eh? I played there myself in my younger days. What, what kind of an act do you do? Escopologist. A what? I escape. Escape from what? From tanks. From tanks filled with water, from chains, from locked cages. Yeah, but not from your hotel bill, I hope. <laughs> That'll be a buck fifty plus two bits for carrying. A dollar six bits all told. There you are, my fine fellow. And don't forget, come to see me perform tomorrow night at the Orpheum. So you're playing the Orpheum, huh? Now, who told you about this place, anyway, the Haymarket? It uh, was recommended to me by a maestro I meet in Marseille. A man se chiam Nicolas Romain. Uh, Nicolas Romain? No, I, I don't seem to remember him. We do have a Miss Romain staying here. She's with her little boy. I'll have to ask her when she comes back in. She may be a relative. Now, let's see about your room. Uh, yeah, I have a nice one on the second floor, number 17. That'll be 50 cents a day with breakfast. Would you care to register? Uh, the room, she's a clean. The great Pantini does not share his bed with the bugs. We have the cleanest place in this town. You can ask anybody that lives here. Ah, oh, Miss Romaine. By the way, over there's a gentleman who might be knowing a relative of yours. Buonasera, signorina. I once had the great honor of appearing on the same appeal with your most esteemed father. My name is Sherlock Holmes. If you value your life and freedom, you will invite me to your room at once. Where is the boy? Show him to me. How did you know? There's no time for that, mademoiselle. Where is he? few grains of laudanum. That is all, monsieur. And only when I must go out. I would not harm the boy. You have most assuredly harmed his mother. What brought you to take part in this outrage? I had no choice, monsieur. Three days ago, a man came to me. Charles Nichols, a tumbler with a twicking and toss. Yes, I had the distinct honor of arresting his brother Bill in London a fortnight ago. The twicking and toss have long been a part of Moriarty's organization. And what did this Charles Nichols say to you? He said that... Unless I did as I was bidden, my brother Anatole in Paris would be murdered. I see. And what were your orders in addition to persuading young Scott to take part in a prank against his governess? I was to bring him here and then engage a room facing the street. Originally, my room was in the rear. Then I was to call the opera and say I was ill. Then, twice a day, I must inform Mr. Nichols that the boy is here and no one has inquired after him. Inform? In what way? Each day at 11 and again at 7, he comes across the street and watches. I walk to the window and open the curtain and nod. And that is all. Which means it's almost time for him to be there now. That was it. You have received Mariatti's instructions. Now you will hear mine. When Charles Nickers arrives, you will give him the proper signal, as you've been told to do, and you will continue to do so twice a day until I relieve you of the responsibility. If you do as I say, you will emerge from this dismal matter unharmed, as will your brother. Fail me in any respect and you will be held accountable for the death of Scott Adler. Dear. Yes, if I were French, I would have said the same thing myself. See if he's there. Well? Yes. 
Then give the proper signal. He is gone. Good. Here's my key. I'm in room 17. It's three doors down. You across the corridor. Go and unlock the door. When the way is clear, give the signal. Do exactly as I told you. The boy's life depends on it. Yes, yes, of course. I will obey you utterly. Do. or two as a show for your adventure. They'll soon disappear under your mother's kisses. This is not an albergo for a Tory. It is a plane for pigs. Prepare my meal at once and send someone up for my luggage. I will not share my room with the bugs. Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson's luggage from the hotel. Come and give me a hand with it. Good heavens, what's this about? I said I've got Dr. Watson and Mr. Holmes' luggage from the hotel like you ordered. I need some help getting it into the house. Hell, I help the man in with the luggage, please. Yes, madam. What have they brought the luggage here for, anyway? I'm sure we'll find out very soon, Watson. Look here, my good man. You're... There's a large trunk on the back of the carriage, Watson. Holmes! As soon as Harrow and I have it halfway across the pavement, so he's blocking the view of a chap across the street. I want you to get into the carriage as fast as you can. Lie on the floor and under no circumstances allow yourself to be seen. Remember, do exactly as I say. Come on, Harrow. <coughs> Careful, brother. Use two hands. Bring your hand down. Close the door. Scott! Is he all right? He's as bitter as a fiddle. He's just feeling the effects of a sleeping draft. Come on. Where's Nico? I read. There's no time to explain. And under no circumstances must you leave this house or allow the lad to be seen. Until I give the word, matters still remain grave. Of course. Come on, Ella. Open the door. 
Do well, my man. Here's something for your pains. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Scott, my darling boy. Who was that man? Tell Moriarty, Holmes and Watson have moved into the Adler house. Sir George, you're right, Holmes. Not a sign of anyone watching us. I assumed as much. We are not beaten yet, Watson. Not by a long joke. Well, what's our next move, Holmes? Oh, what time is it? Uh, uh, never mind. Almost ten. I have not dined, lunched, and if my memory is correct, we didn't even breakfast. I suggest we make up for that lapse in the Algonquin's most excellent restaurant. And after that, we can look up Inspector Lafferty as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah. What I've had today was tea at Miss Adler's after our cab ride. Holmes, over here, tea comes in pouches. I take it this combination is different from the one that unlocks the main doors. It is, sir. How many people know these combinations? Only the six employees of the exchange and myself. And I might add the tumblers are changed every three months. Admirable, if in this case futile. Is this the only way to reach the vaults? Up until six days ago it was. What sort of lift is this? Drum and cable. Works from above. And how far do we descend? 150 feet. At what rate of speed? 200 feet per minute. We appear to have arrived. Yes, so we have. I presume this combination also differs from its fellows and is changed every 90 days as well. Correct, sir. And now, Mr. Holmes. I'm going to ask you to see for yourself what I can only describe as the most dismal sight the world has ever seen. Concrete. The noise must have been deafening. Since they've been working on the subway, you could set off dynamite and no one would hear it. This is a condition that darkness was taken advantage of. Two pieces of bullion were left behind, you say. Well, ah, one in the tunnel there, one 50 feet south of the main excavation. Well, that makes it clear enough, doesn't it, Holmes? They made off in that direction with their bootle. One would immediately accept that conclusion. I quite agree with you. I should like to take a closer look at the vaults now. How many pieces of actual gold were stored here? Just prior to the theft, these vaults held 18 million pounds of gold, consisting of 360,000 
50 pound blocks, each block valued at $28,000. 360,000 blocks of gold removed from here and no one noticed it. If we weren't standing here looking at these vaults, I would say it was impossible. Yes, I should say so too. I should like to return to the lift. Mr. McGraw, this uh, hatchway, does it provide access to the overhead drum cable? Yes. Yes. Watson, give me a leg up, will you? Oh, Inspector. Uh, 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 Thank you, Watson. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, I think I've seen all I need to see. I have one final inquiry to make elsewhere, after which I believe I should be able to make all the pieces fit together and come up with a solution. And the gold. The gold, of course, will be forthcoming with the solution to the problem. In time for the transfer of the bullion tomorrow morning? It is my fondest wish. <clears throat> Where are you up to now? To pay a call on Thomas Ballant and Company, the firm that designed the underground. I wish to ascertain the depth of the excavation of the point at which it passes under the Bowery National Bank. Uh, cab! And I shall be most astonished, Watson, if we're not told the figure is precisely 150 feet. We wish to go to Thomas Balance and Company. You'll find it at 45th Street and 6th Avenue, I believe. Precisely 150 feet, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Bless me, soul. Well, what have you found out? Everything. Everything? You mean you know where the gold is? Why, I knew that the moment we descended in the lift. I merely wanted to double-check my certainty. Well, where is it? We were standing on it. We were sta... Holmes. Well, don't you see what the wily devil has done? No, I don't. And I'm sure I'd be delighted if you told me. Oh, well, very well, Watson. Consider this. 360,000 blocks of gold, each weighing 50 pounds apiece. Now, give Mariati a hundred, say, 200 men, each of them able to carry a 50-pound block of gold. Very well. What then? Oh, uh, thank you, my man. Each one of those 200 men would have to carry 1,800 blocks of gold from the vaults. Now, to carry a single 50-pound block of gold from the vaults through the tunnel to some conveyance waiting in the underground excavation and return for a second block could not be reasonably accomplished in less than 10 minutes. That is 18,000 minutes or 300 hours to complete the task. That is over 12 days, Watson. And yet the gold was still there seven days ago. Mr. McGraw's instincts were quite correct. The task appears impossible despite the evidence of those empty vaults. But, Holmes, they were empty. Thank you. Those vaults were. Those vaults? What on earth are you suggesting? When I asked how far down the lift went, I was told 150 feet, meaning the vault is 150 feet below the bank. But. The depth of the underground excavation at that point was also 150 feet. Now, when I examined the overhead cable while the lift was presumably at the bottom of the shaft, there still remained 10 feet wrapped around the drum. Uh, Mr. McGraw told me the rate of descent was 200 feet per minute, which means it should have taken 45 seconds to reach the bottom of the shaft. It only took 42. Oh, and I'm sure you noticed that the tunnel from the vaults to the underground excavation slanted downwards. Oh, did it? Watson. There is only one inescapable conclusion. The vaults we examined were not the vaults containing the gold, but an exact replica built directly above the actual vaults. It will be discovered, I am confident, that when the floor of the lift is removed, iron bars will have been inserted into the shaft to stop the lift descending the remaining 10 feet into the actual vault, where all of the gold still safely resides. But, Holmes, the vault door, the combination lock, the cages themselves, everything. Duplicated down to the smallest detail. A member of McGraw's staff must have thrown in his luck with Moriarty and provided him with all the necessary information. But that must have taken them months. Yes, and with hundreds of men employed upon the construction of the underground, who would notice a handful of Moriarty's cohorts tunneling for purposes of their own? But, Holmes, you were certain of all this when we were still with Inspector Lafferty. But you said nothing. Why? Watson, I... 
I still fear for the boy's life. But he's safe at home. Only so long as Moriarty still believes him prisoner. Tomorrow's newspapers hold the key. If the theft is reported, then Moriarty will know that I have obeyed his orders and will be safe to release Scott. But on the other hand, if the financial pages carry news of the transaction of the gold, then he will know that I have tricked him. He will hasten to seize Scott from Mademoiselle Romaine, and when he finds that I forestalled him, his rage will be so tiring that he will not rest until he has taken his revenge upon me through Scott. I must know where Moriarty is. Until he is in the custody of the police, I cannot safely reveal the location of the gold. No other course of action is permissible. But how on earth can you expect to manage that? It took you half a year to ferret out the man's lodgings in Limehouse. Watson, I'm not too proud to learn. Why not use his methods in ferreting me out? Holmes, where are you going? Back to that most admirable establishment, Eve's Costume Company. Oh, dressing up again, I take it. I wonder what he's going as this time. Liquors, I presume. Put your hands in the air. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I dare say you've heard of me. Quite right. Yes, I've often wondered why he hasn't chosen to do just that on many an occasion. Now, unless you wish to go the way of your brother, Bill, you'll tell me who is in that building. The professor. And how many others? Speak sharply, man, or you'll swing for it. Holmes. Constable, here is my card. Take this man in charge and get word to Inspector Lafferty at once that the building behind me is to be surrounded and its occupants arrested. Tell him I will provide him with full details directly. Thank you. Keep the chair. I suggest you take these words to heart, my man. There you are. Hello. Get back to Inspector Lafferty as quickly as possible. Yes, sir. Within the half hour, Professor Moriarty and his entire American organization will be in custody. I 
Irene, your fears are at an end. So. Well, young man, you have had more than an adventure, much more. You've aided in the capture of the world's most notorious criminal, and you have been instrumental in preventing a devastating world war. Well, I wish I'd known all that, sir. I wouldn't have slept through so much of it. Well said. He's a bright boy. Goodbye, Scott. Goodbye, Mr. Holmes. Must be off. Must you leave now? Just to hear of Inspector Lafferty's success. Let's get this ridiculous outfit back to the costume here. I shall see you to the door. It's amazing, Irene. You haven't changed at all since that week in Montenegro. When was it? 1891. What? Right. Not changed in ten years. Sherlock how galant of you, but come now, ten years. I notice nothing. Sherlock Holmes notices nothing. Why am I so different then? No, far from it. That was my first thought when you burst in here. My heavens, it's as though it were yesterday. I hadn't known. After that first misadventure from which I managed to extricate you, that you had married again. I have never remarried, Sherlock. I see. You were appearing in Rigoletto. But you were on a walking tour. I remember thinking to myself, what a... what an unlikely place to come across you, Montenegro. You who were always attracted by the bright lights of the metropolis. I remember thinking the same about you. What an unlikely place to find someone who was never at home outside London. Until then. Eight o'clock. If things have gone well, and they cannot fail to have done so, I shall get word to you. Then perhaps the three of us could take supper together. I don't mean what's. I shall wait for your message. Holmes! Holmes, where have you been? We've been waiting goodness knows how long. For me? What is it, Watson? Inspector, didn't you get my message? I did. That fellow Nickers revealed the name of McGraw's man who cooperated with Moriarty. He's been arrested. The warehouse has been seized, and 15 of Moriarty's men are in jail right now. But not Moriarty. Not Moriarty? Is this true? I'm afraid so. He abandoned his men and slipped through our net. We must get to Irene's house on the instant. Scott Adler is in the most extreme peril. Into this wagon, quickly. 14 Gramercy Park. But they're not here, Mr. Holmes. Not here? Where are they? They went to meet you, sir. You sent them that telegram. What telegram? Meet me at the fountain in the park within the hour, Sherlock. I have sent them directly into his hands. When did they leave? Why, within the half hour. Quick. Watson, Inspector. The game's afoot. We have not a moment to lose. This is it. 
I say, look, there's Miss Adler. Sherlock. Sherlock, they have him. They have him again. Where? Two. Holmes! There. Just round in the corner. The chap driving the cab. There's the ones. Inspector, we must overtake that cab. Come on. That cab headed south. Catch up with it. <laughs> Our heels, Professor. Simple acting, boy. Through that door and up those stairs. Smart. His secret headquarters, they brought him here. Round up a squad as soon as you can. Shall we burst in and seize them? No. No, Inspector, I must go in alone. Who knows what harm he might do to Scott if cornered? And I'm sure these premises blaze with hidden pitfalls. When the lad comes out of this door unharmed, then you may come in after me. Scott! Fear not, Irene. You shall not long be parted. You know what to do. Ready the launch. Don't move, boy. It'll be the finish up. We'll join you as soon as I've completed one final bit of business. Mr. Holmes, I thought it might be you. I have no doubt of that at all. Well, I'm a little touch of London, I see. You must really feel at home in this chamber of horrors to duplicate it wherever you go. You may release the boy now. I'm the one you want, and here I stand. Let the lad return to his mother. You're wrong, Mr. Holmes. I've got what I want. I've got the boy. Dare you cross the room to fetch him? Passage leads to the river where a steam launch waits. The boy comes with me. You'll never see him again, neither you nor his mother. That's the revenge I'll have of you. You'll neither of you ever see this precious boy again. Blast you, boy! Well done, Scott. Mama! Scott! Scott! Oh, my darling. 
I'm going in, Inspector. Come on! Drop your hands. Holmes, good heavens! Come on. Come on. Now, gentlemen, I'll be. I can all that bloody oh, man. Oh. Thank you, gentlemen. Are you all right, sir? Yes, thank you. Mariotti, good night, Mr. Holmes. Quick, he's getting away. Back up, back up! Let the victory be yours this time, but there'll be other battles on other battlefields, and victory's such a temporary thing, isn't it, Mr. Holmes? Good night again. What in the world would it lead to, Holmes? To the river where he has a steam launch waiting him. I'll have a police vessel in his wake within the hour. No, Inspector. Within half that time, you'll be well beyond the bounds of your jurisdiction. I'm afraid the final encounter between Moriarty and me is yet to come. At any rate, I'm... I'm assured of the boy's safety. My dear Watson, I owe you a profound debt of gratitude. That tide would soon have carried me to a certain death. Well, it's a pleasure, Holmes. Don't mention it. Uh. Inspector, our quarry may have eluded us. But his evil scheme has been thwarted. What time is the transfer of gold to take place? Eleven tomorrow morning. Then let us be there at 10.30. Why, I assure you, Inspector, I am not jesting. And you will not be disappointed. Yes, Lord Brackish, managing director of the Bank of England, was to be murdered mysteriously. His death, of course, as you can well imagine, would have caused great panic in the world's financial circles. This theft was to have been the culmination of a grand scheme. I was able to foil the assassination attempt of Lord Brackish, and I have been able to forestall the theft of the gold. Mr. Holmes, I certainly hope your confidence is not over-expressed. We may test its validity at your convenience, Mr. McGraw, for we seem to have arrived. Accounted for? No illusion, no slight add, no mirage. If you're satisfied with all the gold that's been returned, Dr. Watson and I must be off. We have a busy day ahead of us. It's our last before returning home. Surely you'll do me the honor of dining with me. Well, regretfully, Mr. McGraw, we have to decline your kind invitation. We, and a young lad of our acquaintance, have tickets this evening for the second Mrs. Tanqueray. Oh, gentlemen. Mr. Holmes! Mr. Holmes! Aren't you going to explain how you did this? No. But I expect one day Dr. Watson will. Mr. Holmes!
you really leave at once? I'm afraid so. There are so many things in England that require my attention right now. All of which you abandoned to race to my rescue. Sherlock, now that I'm rescued, can you not stay a while to enjoy your success? I wish I could. But the uh, Truria sails before dawn, and Watson and I must pack our things before the carriage comes to take us to the docks. What are you running from, Sherlock? Running? Well, I, I suppose inactivity, boredom. Are you sure it's not fear? Fear? Fear of what? Perhaps the unknown. My dear Irene, let's see. Uh, known, I fear. I seek the unknown, the unknown mystery, the unknown peril. I yearn for the unknown. And for nothing else? Sherlock, is there nothing you'd like to ask me? Uh, yes. But I cannot. Why? Okay. Because of the possible answer I might receive. I see. But if you cannot ask it, I cannot answer it. And if I were to ask it? And if the answer were the wrong one? You see, I too, perhaps, am in fear of the known. Shall we meet again, do you think? I should like to think so. Shall I continue to receive theater tickets? So long as I continue to perform. With a word or two included about the boy, perhaps. I should be most happy to. Uh, Likeable. Chap, young Scott, really? You think so? Yes, sir. What are his interests, mainly? He seems to have a fondness for music and solving problems. I see. have another picture of the boy I could have. Take this one. It must be your favorite. It is. I should treasure it. Always. Mr. George, two hours, we're at sea. Ten days are back in London, back in Baker Street. Back where you can drink a proper cup of tea, hail a proper hansom if you want one. Even travel the underground if it suits your purposes. I don't know about you, Holmes, but I've failed to discover a single feature of this New York City that we've not got threefold in London. Have you, Holmes? Perhaps not, Watson. Perhaps not.